Well, thank you all very much. It's a very important day. I'll sign the single biggest economic relief package in American history, and I must say, or any other package, by the way. It's twice as large as any relief ever signed. It's uh, $2.2 billion, but it actually goes up to $6.2, potentially, billion dollars, trillion dollars. So you're talking about a $6.2 trillion bill, nothing like that. And this will deliver urgently needed relief to our nation's families, workers, and businesses. And uh, that's what this is all about. And it got a 96 to nothing. And I don't know, what was the number in uh, Congress? What voice was votes. The voice wow. was yep. fantastic. I think it's just as close. That's pretty amazing. That's about the same thing, right, Kevin? Yes. I think. So that's fantastic. But I want to thank Republicans and Democrats for coming together, setting aside their differences, and putting America first. This legislation provides for direct payments to individuals and unprecedented support to small businesses. We're going to keep our small businesses strong and our big businesses strong. And that's keeping our country strong and our jobs strong. This historic bill includes the following. $300 billion in direct cash payments will be available to every American citizen earning less than $99,000 per year, $3,400 for a typical family of four. So family of four, $3,400. And then $350 billion in job retention loans for small businesses with loan forgiveness available for businesses that continue paying their workers. The workers get paid. Approximately $250 billion in expanded unemployment benefits, the average worker who has lost his or her job will receive 100 percent of their salary for up to four full months. So things like this have never happened in our country. $500 billion in support for hard-hit industries with a ban on corporate stock buybacks. We don't let them buy back the stock. We don't let that happen. And tough limits on executive compensation over $100 billion to support our heroic doctors, nurses, and hospitals. And you see what's happening. And I want to thank, while we're here, also the incredible job that's done by the Army Corps of Engineers and by FEMA. It's been incredible. They did four hospitals in two days or three days in New York, and they're, like, incredible structures. What a job they've been doing, and they're doing them all over the country. $45 billion for the Disaster Relief Fund, supporting our state, local, and tribal leaders. $27 billion for the development of vaccines, therapies, and other public health response efforts, including $16 billion to build up the strategic national stockpile with critical stockpiles. And I'm going to — we have uh, tremendous supplies coming into the stockpile, and you'll be seeing that and hearing about it a little bit, because we're doing a, a news conference at 5.30 on what's happening. We've had tremendous uh, results on the respirators. We've had great results on uh, just about everything we're talking about. Uh, Boeing just announced that they're going to be making the plastic face shields, the actual shields, which are hard to come by, and they're going to be making them by the thousands a week. And uh, the ventilators, which is probably the most difficult, because it's like it's like building a car, uh, we will be announcing thousands uh, of — are going to be built, and we have them under contract, and uh, we have fast deliveries. As you know, we delivered thousands to New York, and unfortunately, they were delivered to a warehouse, which was good. Unfortunately, they didn't take them, but now they're taking them. New York is now taking them and uh, redistributing them around the areas that they need. So you have also $3.5 billion to states to expand child care benefits for health care workers first responders and others on the front lines of this crisis, and $1 billion for securing supplies under the Defense Protection Act. And as you know, I've uh, enacted the act. We've used it uh, three or four times. I pulled it back three times because uh, the companies came through in the end. They didn't need the act. It's been great leverage. I have instituted it against General Electric. We thought we had a deal for 40000 ventilators, and all of a sudden, the 40000 came down to 6000 And uh, then they talked about a higher price than we were discussing, so I didn't like it. Uh, so we did uh, — we did activate it with respect to General Motors, and hopefully, maybe we won't even need the full activation. We'll find out. But we need the ventilators. Uh, I said hello today. I called him. Uh, 
a wonderful guy, Boris Johnson, as you know, he tested positive. And before he even said hello, he said, we need ventilators. I said, wow, that's a big statement. And hopefully, he's going to be in good shape. I just spoke to Angela Merkel, and uh, she's quarantined also. She is right now uh, for a period of two weeks uh, being forced to stay in her house. So this is uh, just an incredible situation. Last night, I spoke to President Xi. We talked about uh, the experience that they had in China and all of the things that have taken place. And we, uh, we learn a lot. They've had a very tough experience. And uh, they're doing well, and he's doing well. President Xi is doing very well. But we learned a lot, and we have great communication together. Uh, we're going to be sent great data from China, things that happened that they see that, uh, you know, they've had a — they've had an early experience. And uh, we're getting all of that information. Much of it has already been sent. It was sent yesterday and sent to our scientists to — to study. So we'll have more on that also. We'll be discussing that at 530. Uh, I just want to thank the people behind me. They've been incredible friends. They've been warriors. They, uh, there's nobody tougher or smarter than the people standing alongside of me. And I think I want to start off by asking uh, Mitch and then Kevin to speak, and then we're going to go through a few of the folks in the room if they'd like to say something. But, Mitch, I'd like — I'd love you to say a few words, because you uh, — this man worked 24 hours a day for a long time. This is the result. It's the biggest ever ever approved in Congress, $6.2 trillion. So, you know, we used to get used to the billion. It used to be a million, then it was billion, now it's trillion. And uh, it's going to go a long way. It's going to make a lot of people very happy. Mitch McConnell, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Let me just say this is a proud moment for our country, for the President, the Republicans, and the Democrats all pulled together and passed the biggest bill in history in record time. I also want to thank Kevin McCarthy and our uh, leaders on the Republican side in the House who helped speed this through to passage. The American people needed this rescue package. They needed it quickly, and we delivered. It's a proud moment for all of us. Mr. President, thanks for the thank opportunity you. to be here. I'd love to shake your hand, but Anthony would get angry at me if I did that. <laughs> so I better not do it. I can't — it's so natural. I just want to go back and shake his hand. They have done such an incredible job. Kevin, please. Yeah, I, I do want to start. I want to thank all. Um, the, real, the real answer to America is we're listening to you. You do your part, and we're going to do ours. And that's exactly what's happening today. What Leader McConnell did was amazing. He made it bipartisan, bicameral. Uh, everybody was involved. I wish we could have signed this earlier this week. Maybe there wouldn't be as many people who are out of work, but this will put people back to work. I also want to thank Secretary Mnuchin. You've done an amazing job, and we thank you for that, and all the team that's here. Um, look, as I said in my speech, the virus is here. We didn't ask for it. We didn't invite it. Um, we didn't choose it, but we are going to defeat it together because we're going to work together, and this is the first start of it. The hospitals will get money, the money they need. The small businesses will be able to hire their employees back. That is a grant. You don't have to borrow from that place. The other businesses get a retention to keep your employees on. Uh, this has something for everything. And to the task force and the vice president, all the work that you're doing with this president, this will be the needed resources you need as well. And so thank you for that, and thank you for your leadership, Mr. Very president. Very special. Uh, Mike Pence, Mike. Could you please say something? You've been working very hard in charge of our task force. And then I'd like to ask Steve to say a few words. Thank you, Mr. President. Thanks for giving me the opportunity just to uh, express uh, all of our appreciation and the gratitude of the American people uh, for the, the accomplishment that's reflected in the legislation that you'll sign in, in just a few moments. Uh, you told the American people that we would do whatever it takes. Uh, you called on the Congress to step forward, to make uh, coronavirus testing free for every American, to make paid family leave available. Uh, the Congress, with the leaders gathered around us here, stepped forward in a bipartisan fashion and delivered. But today, uh, every American family, every American business can know that help is on the way. And I want to thank Leader McConnell for his yeoman's work in really forging a bipartisan bill in the United States Senate. I want to thank uh, Leader McCarthy for his uh, great work. But as the President said, I also want to thank the Democrat and Republican leadership across the House and Senate. This is an American accomplishment, 
Mr. President, it's exactly what you asked the Congress to deliver for the American people. Thank you very much, Mike. And Steve Mnuchin, you know how hard he's been working. And Steve, please say a few words. Mr. President, thank you very much for your leadership and for the Vice President's leadership. You made it very clear to us last week we should think big, that this was a war on the virus, and that we should have the resources to protect American workers and American business. And uh, I'd like to thank the Senate. It was a great honor, Mitch, to work with you and everyone on a bipartisan basis to get this done. This is going to be a great thing for the American workers. And Kevin McCarthy, thank you for all the work in the House did to pass this quickly. So at Treasury, as I've said, we are committed to move forward quickly, and we're going to get money in people's pockets quickly. Thank you, Mr. President. Great job, Steve. Gene, please. This is a great day for uh, American workers. Uh, protecting American workers, American jobs has been a hallmark of this presidency, and this uh, bill today is another very important step in that direction. It includes uh, unprecedented support for American workers who've uh, lost their jobs through no fault of their own, uh, but because of this virus, and uh, gives them as near as we could uh, the same wage they would have gotten through unemployment insurance if they'd been able to keep their jobs for up to four months. I think even more important, it includes uh, $350 billion in loans for small business, but structured in a way to incentivize them to keep their workers on payroll so that those loans can be forgiven uh, at the end of the period. And it comes on top of legislation the President passed, uh, signed last week for paid leave for workers who have to be at home because of the virus, uh, paid leave uh, reimbursed in full dollar for dollar to the employer. It's the first federal paid leave law for the private sector ever. And that also was achieved on an unprecedented bipartisan basis. This is the third major bipartisan piece of legislation in three weeks, three bills, three weeks, to address this virus. So again, I want to thank the President for his leadership, his commitment to American workers, the Vice President as well, and, and Leader McConnell, and also my colleague, uh, Secretary Mnuchin, who did work so thank hard you, to help Chief you get this done. Dr. Fauci, you may want to just say for a minute, what hit the world? Something hit the world? and. The world maybe will never be quite the same, but uh, uh, we're going to make it a great place anyway. But uh, certainly, uh, you could maybe say a few words about yeah. that. Please. Well, thank you, Mr. President. And I want to thank everyone involved in this. This is what America is all about, a bipartisan approach with your leadership to do something that's sorely needed by the American people. Dr. Burks and I and all of our medical people here are fighting the virus directly, but the virus has an impact on the American people both directly by illness and death, but also indirectly because many of the things that we have to do to suppress the virus has a negative impact because of what we're doing. To give them relief economically is absolutely essential. So I feel really, really good about what's happening today. Thank you all very thank much. You, thank you very much. Deborah, perhaps you could say a few words also about Well, thank you, Mr. President. Um, Dr. Fauci covered it very well. As many of you know, I worked for him and he was my mentor. 40 years ago. Um, I think whenever we start with one of these very serious diseases and a pandemic, the President's first goal was ensuring the health of the American people, and that's why we put out these very strong guidance. It's been a pleasure to work with the economic team here because they understand data in the same way. Economic data and health data is very similar in how you have to interpret it in a very granular way. And I think recognizing that the health of the American people is first, but the economic value of the nation is also critical. And I just want to thank all of you for what you've done for the American people today. Great job you're doing, too. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin, please. So just you know, 20 days ago, I, I don't know that anyone could have imagined how hard we've been hit, uh, medically or economically. But 20 days ago, I don't think anyone could have imagined Congress pulling together so quickly and so forcefully behind what the President identified we needed for this country. Uh, this is a proud moment for all of us, and uh, it's just an example of what leadership can provide here in the White House and then how we can re uh, respond as a Congress. So thank you, Mr. President, for your leadership. I'm just saying, as Kevin's saying, that uh, 20 days ago, a couple of days longer than that maybe, we had a smooth, running, beautiful machine we had the greatest economy in the history of our country. We had the highest stock price we've ever seen. It went up, I think, 151 times during the course of the presidency. And then we got hit by the invisible enemy, and we got hit hard. But it wasn't just us. It was 151 countries, I think, as of, the, as of this morning. Uh, and you call Germany and 
speak to Angela. She's in quarantine. And as you know, Boris was diagnosed that he's positive. And uh, all of the things that are happening, it's hard to believe what's uh, gone on just in a short period of time. And uh, because of the talent behind me and lots of other talent in government, what we've done, this is a big part of it, obviously, but not the biggest part. Uh, everybody's pulled together. Our nation's pulled together. The spirit is incredible. The people have pulled together more than anyone and better than anybody. And uh, they're doing really, really well. Uh, but just to think how life can change, where you go 20 to 22 days ago, everything's perfect. We're looking forward. I'm saying, when are we going to hit 30,000? I want 30,000. That means more jobs and more everything. And then one day we get hit with this thing that nobody ever heard of before. Nobody ever even heard of before. And now we're fighting a different battle. But I really think in a fairly short period of time, because of what they've done and what everyone's done, I really think we're going to be uh, stronger than ever. And we'll be protected from a lot of this. A lot of the things, Anthony, that uh, we've done now, that we're doing now, are going to protect us in the future if this should happen again from testing to uh, so many other, even even stockpiles, right? Yeah, the vaccines, hopefully, and uh, vaccines, cures, therapeutics, whatever you want to call it, it's uh, a lot of progress. And I think on that score, I think we're making a lot of progress on vaccines. We're making, uh, perhaps, a lot of progress on cures and therapeutics. We'll be letting you know. Anybody else have anything? Greg, please, President, go ahead, folks. Um, I, I would just say I've never seen you shy away from a challenge. Uh, your leadership. Um, and your policies and this great team brought America this enormous economy, and guess what? You get to do it again. And this bill is the, the next step in that, and we can build back this economy with your leadership and, and with the health care team you've got here, too. We're doing the right thing for the American people, and they know that. I can tell you that from the ground. It's not easy. No, it's, it's not easy. We don't want a shelter in place as Americans. We want to be out, especially in the Northwest. Yeah. But we know we have to do this for the safety of our relatives and families and our community and our country. So thanks for your leadership Thank you and the much, great Greg. team you've assembled. Appreciate it very much. Yeah. On behalf of small businesses, they're the backbone of the American economy. About half the people that work in America work for a small business, and they're hurting out there right now. I'm from Ohio. I'm the ranking member of the House Small Business Committee. And back there, non-essential small businesses are, are shut down. Without this legislation, it's questionable whether they would reopen. Because of this legislation, they now have a great chance of that. Um, and those people that work for small businesses or shutter now will be paid. That's really important. Uh, this wouldn't have passed without your leadership, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you very much. And you know, Eric worked so hard. You all know Eric. And uh, he was at Steve's side the whole way. And, and where is our man? Is, do I see Larry? Yeah, Larry. The two of them. Uh, how about Eric? And then Larry, say a couple of words. And uh, Well, thank was, you very much, Mr. Easy. President. I really appreciate it. And Mr. Vice President as well. So. You encourage your team to be bold, be brave, and go big. And we certainly delivered today. <laughs> $6.2 trillion is tremendous. So we've made sure that we can reassure Americans that their paycheck is protected and that their earnings are protected. We've made sure that we can provide significant reinforcement to the American economy as a result of your leadership. And finally, looking ahead to address the virus, we've included significant resources in order to ensure that those therapies and ultimately that vaccine can come online as quickly as possible. So protecting the public health and protecting the economic health of America is what you've directed us to do. And together with the team, we've worked hard to deliver today. Thank you very Thank much, you Mr. Very President. Much. And Steve is going to work very hard on getting the money out quickly. And hopefully it can be distributed very quickly, especially when they have some old computer equipment that they have to use, but you're going to work on that very hard. Yeah, indeed. Larry, please. Larry Oh, Cardinal. thanks, sir. Just uh, hats off to uh, Mitch McConnell. Did an amazing job, and House leadership as well. And I agree with the bipartisanship. I want to give special thanks to my friend Stephen Mnuchin, who I think did an extraordinary job. We were up there helping him out in one spot or another, but he's indefatigable and got it done. And I'll just say this, Mr. President. A few months ago, this economy was roaring, and we've hit this, uh, literally, this bug, this virus, and we will deal with it. And I think the assistance bill here, which does have growth incentives, will help lead us back to a very strong economic rebound before this year is over. I think that, too. Thank I think you, we're going to have a tremendous rebound uh, at the end of the year, toward the end of the year. I think we're going to have a rebound like we have never seen before. Even now, it wants to rebound. You can see it. You feel it. 
it wants to rebound so badly. And, uh, you know, we've had those really big, I guess, the biggest ever stock market surge uh, two days ago, and yesterday was great. Uh, three biggest days of the history of the stock market. It wants to rebound so badly, but we have to get rid of the bug. We have to get rid of the, uh, the virus. Now, I'm going to sign this, and it's a great honor. $6.2 trillion. I've never signed anything with a T on it. I don't know if I can handle this one, Mitch. We can't chicken out at this point, can we? I don't think so, huh? All right. Thank you all. Good. I wanted that to be a nice signature. That was job she's doing with transportation. How's transportation? Okay. We will always talk about the supply chain. I do. It's really right. important. I do. This you bill is going to help the supply chain and it. the workers. Thank you very much. Anthony, thank you. Thanks, Tony, very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Appreciate it. Bob Lighthizer, thank you very much. Bob was a little less involved in this. He's too busy making trade deals. Okay. Do you have one? Well, you definitely have to have one. Go ahead. You're all set. Thank you, everybody. So we're going to have a 5.30 news conference in the uh, same location. Seems to be doing quite well. And uh, we appreciate everything. And we really appreciate the fairness, at least from most of the press. We really do. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank Mr. you. President, Thank you very much. Mr. President, there was a rare moment of agreement today between you and, and Senator Kerry over the uh, That's right. issue with Massey. Can you expand a bit on that? Well, he made a little joke about a man named Congressman Massey. I thought he was totally out of line, Congressman Massey. Uh, because of that, I guess a lot of people had to come back. And they had to go into a place which, frankly, we're not supposed to be in, you know, in light of uh, what we're doing with, uh, with Deborah and Tony and all of the professionals. So. Uh, people had to come back, uh, and uh, just no reason for it. So uh, John Kerry made a little joke out of it, and I agreed with his joke. And I said, I never knew he had that kind of a personality, but we actually put it up, and uh, he was right. Okay. We'll see you in a couple of minutes, folks. Thank you very much. Thank you.